Hey there! In this video I'm going to show you how to quickly and efficiently make base color layers or flat colors and demonstrate how useful they can be. These tips should help you save a lot of time and make your drawing process more streamlined. I will use Clip Studio Paint and its tools in this video, but some things could also be useful for other graphics programs. Alright, let's get to it. So, I already have a drawing prepared. All the lines are done, they are here in their own folder. The lines don't have to be all on one singular layer. The first thing I normally do right after I finish drawing the lines is making a base color layer. It's just a normal layer with one color, filling out the entire drawing. All the other color layers, shading, highlighting and so on will be built on top of it. There are many different ways to make this base color layer. You could just paint it all in manually, but that is unnecessarily time consuming. And even using the regular fill tool can take a while if there are a lot of areas to fill in. Also, you can see that it has problems with textured lines. The little bits inside those lines are not fully filled in. There, however, is a very quick and easy way to fill in the entire drawing, with only a few simple corrections necessary. Either use the Close and Fill or Paint Unfilled Area tools, or the Advanced Fill in the Edit menu. These tools work differently from the regular fill tool. There is one key difference in the settings, the target color. You see, when you fill something in with the regular fill tool, the program takes the pixel you clicked on and spreads out the color from there, until it hits some kind of walls. However, the other fill tools scan the entire drawing, or the area you selected, and figures out based on your chosen target color and other settings, which areas should be filled in and which shouldn't. That sounds complicated and there are a lot of options, but it honestly is not that confusing. You don't need to understand how every single one of these target color settings work. In this video I will only explain those that I normally use. But in another video I explained all of the settings of the fill tools in detail, together with some demonstrations. So first of all, the lines need to be set as reference layers. You can also set an entire folder as such. Additionally, it is possible to hold Ctrl, select the layers you need, and then set all of them as reference layers. In the Fill Tool settings, make sure that you have Refer Multiple on and set to Reference Layers. Then create a normal layer below the lines. Let's use the Advanced Fill, since we want to fill in the entire drawing, and not just a specific selection. As target color, I usually use all enclosed areas including transparency. This means that all the areas that are enclosed by the lines and the pixels covered by the lines themselves get filled in. Tolerance or color margin in older versions doesn't really matter since everything gets filled in anyways. Area scaling is set to a small negative value because, as I said before, the pixels below the lines are also filled in. Doing this retreats the color a little bit back inwards. Here is a side by side comparison to show you the difference. On the left side the area scaling was set to 0 and on the right it was minus 2. Some pixels of the lines are semi-transparent and therefore show that color beneath them. It looks like the color is spilling over, which doesn't look all that great. But with the negative area scaling we can fix this problem easily. Also notice that although the lines are textured, everything is neatly filled in. Something the regular fill tool struggled with. It might not work as intended if the lines have gaps, but you can make it work. Here is another drawing that has gaps in the lines. This can also be a stylistic choice. In this case, you can either use the Close Gap setting or close up the gaps manually. Make sure you are on the same layer that is going to be the base color layer. If you did the manual method, make sure that in the Refer Multiple setting, you turned on all or selected layers and Exclude Editing layer is off. Otherwise, it would ignore the paint that we just used to cover the gaps. Back to our jungle drawing. The only thing left is to make some corrections. There are some areas that were supposed to remain transparent. That can be easily fixed with a regular fill tool with transparency as a selected color, making it into a convenient eraser. Refer multiple should be set to reference layer again and the area scaling is now set to a small positive value. So, with these settings you can swiftly erase the areas that you need. And after that, use a solid eraser, zoom in, and go around the entire outer border of the drawing while making corrections. At sharp corners there can be some bits of unwanted color, especially if you use textured lines. 
set the color to something that has a very high contrast to the lines and background, so that you can easily see it right away. And after that, it is done. The base color layer is ready now. The advanced fill is in my command bar, so that I can use it super quickly. Just right click on it, select command bar settings, and choose whatever you need from the menus and edit. A general tip for you, put whatever tools you need on a regular basis into your command bar. It makes your work process much more efficient. And if it gets too cluttered, make use of separators, or go to icon settings and change the shape and colors of the icons. Ok, back to the original topic. One thing that I still want to mention are vector layers, and how they can be useful for filling in colors in certain situations. All of these lines that you can see here are actually vector lines, so lines that were drawn on vector layers. I find it useful because it makes corrections significantly easier. And also, fill tools have another setting, called fill up to vector path. If you have this option activated, it will only look at the vector paths, and not the pixels. With the hidden option include vector path, it will also include the one pixel line of the vector path itself. Here you can see a comparison with semi-transparent lines. For textured lines this might not always be the best choice, since as I said before, it only looks at the vector path itself, not the texture. For solid brushes however, it is very useful. Just keep in mind that even though the pixels of the two lines might be connected, the vector paths might not be, leaving a small gap. In that case, use the close gap setting or adjust the lines. Alright, so we have this base color layer now. What can you do with it? All the following layers can be clipped on this base layer and so you stay with certainty within the drawing. Let's fill in some of these plans. You can use the regular fill tool for this purpose. This time I will not set the whole line folder as reference layer, but only specific layers. You see these detail lines within the plans? I want to ignore those and just fill in the entire leaves and flowers. Since I drew them on separate layers, I only select the layers I want by holding control and then set them as reference layers. After that, I just fill in everything, very quick and easy. Well, not quite. Make sure your settings are optimized so that you'll have to make as little corrections as possible later on. In order to fill in plenty of area underneath the lines, have a higher area scaling value. If you have lines with variable thickness, then you run the risk of spilling your color over the lines if your area scaling value is too high. So in this case set the scaling mode, which is a subsetting of the area scaling, to two darkest pixel. This will stop the fill tool if it registers that the pixels get lighter or more transparent again, which is the other side of the line, you know, the side that we don't want to paint in. For textured brushes it is a bit less useful however. Having a higher tolerance value is also recommended. In case you want to fill in several areas that are next to each other, just hold left click and move the cursor across those areas. They will get automatically filled in while ignoring the lines themselves. Another way to fill in several areas at once is to use the Close and Fill or Paint Unfilled Area tools. For this example we use the target color setting only transparent. This means that it will ignore the lines and only fill in transparent pixels that are enclosed by the lines. I also use a high tolerance value so that even the small gaps of the textured lines themselves count. Don't go for 100 though. Now here in this case you have to make sure that the entire area is selected by your tool. If you leave out even the tiniest bit, it will not count it. So if you have several areas next to each other, but only want to fill in specific ones, then make sure the unwanted areas are not completely encircled. Also, if you want to have more precision with the Paint Unfilled Area tool, then add pressure sensitivity to the brush size. Keep in mind that the lines don't have to be on a separate layer though. For example, let's draw some stripes for the tiger. One way to draw them is to outline the lines on their own layer. Just some shaky lines that roughly follow the curvature of the stripe patterns. And make sure that these shapes have no gaps. Now we have many small areas that need to be filled in. Painting them in manually would be tedious. Same for the regular fill tool, you'd have to click into all of these tiny areas. So we use one of the selection fill tools. I'm just encircling everything with the close and fill tool and voila, all done. Using the fill tools efficiently can save you a lot of time and headache in the long run. There are also several ways to manage those individual flat colors. You could for example use the auto select tool with zero tolerance so that only that specific flat color is targeted. 
If there are several areas with that color, make sure that Applied to Connected Pixels Only is turned off. And then go to Edit, Tonal Correction, and Hue Saturation Luminosity to adjust the color with a live preview. Or you have all the colors on separate layers, which is convenient if you need to adjust them later or want to clip some other things on top of those. I advise you to work with folders in that case. Folders can be used to get more instances of clipping. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, it is not possible to clip a layer to another that is already clipped. It would only be clipped to the same layer at the bottom. For example, I have this multiply layer with a texture, and I only want one specific color layer to have that texture. If I clip that layer right here, the texture shows up for all the layers below it. But if you put all of these layers into a folder, so that only the folder has to be clipped and not the individual layers, then it is possible to clip the texture to just one particular layer. And there is no limit to that kind of stacking. You can have as many folders within folders as you need. Base layers are also convenient for shading and highlighting. Here is another drawing of mine, a character from a tabletop token shop. For this one I also made a base color layer. I changed its color to plain white, clipped a multiply layer above it, chose a dark purple color and painted in the shadows. For painting the brighter parts and highlights I changed the color of the base layer to a dark blue. I did that by clipping a fill layer to the base, convenient if you want to turn the color off and on. Then I painted everything with a glow dodge layer while using a white color. The dark fill color is needed because obviously you wouldn't be able to see any highlights if the base color is already white. Doing the shading and highlighting like this before you add any colors helps you make sure that the values are consistent across many different colors. These characters have several color variants and I don't want to completely readjust the shades and lighting for each one of them. So, using flat colors and clipping all sorts of other layers and folders on top of them is super versatile and useful. Of course it needs some getting used to. Depending on the size of your project, it can get quite complex. That is also why labeling your layers and marking them with colors is very important to keep track of everything. It might feel tedious to rename every layer, but in the long run you'll save time and your sanity. And that is basically all I can share about base color layers and using fill tools to create them. Again, if you want to learn more about the settings of fill tools and various ways of filling in your line art, then check out my other tutorial video about filling in line art. I put a lot of work into it to make it as comprehensive and thorough as possible. Alright then, thank you a lot for watching, and have fun drawing!